it's, it's always fun to watch them play with passion and to see those guys get out from the football. Hey, Coach, uh, I want to ask you about with Emmett being uh, down for the moment, how are some of the other guys been able to step up? And are you seeing some of the younger guys being able to come in and fill that role a little bit for you? You know, one thing I think that's really unique about the linebackers is that just like the rest of the team, our standard is excellence. And these guys, I mean, they, they work incessantly really to improve. I mean, you, you talk about youth, but yeah, most of the guys in that room played last year. And so they have game experience. So I think youth from an age standpoint, yes, that, that's, that's true. But these guys have played in ACC football games. And so they're not young anymore. And it's, it's really fun to watch them play and connect with chemistry. I mean, they really love each other. They, they, they compete with one another. And I think that's really good and healthy for a linebacker room. Yeah, Coach, um, could you talk about maybe the spring that Amari Gaynor is having? Um, he seems to have made some flash plays in the scrimmages and practice. Do you like what you're getting out of him, and how much room is there still to go? Yeah, A.G. Has, has had a really good spring. You know, he's improving significantly fundamentally. You know, he's a tremendous athlete, and I think that he knows that, that the more that he can improve in the, in the fundamental areas of his game, the sky's the limit for him. I, he has a tremendous amount of potential, but he doesn't live in that. You know, he lives in the work. He, he grinds extremely hard. He works, he works, his work ethic is really high. And he's a guy, when you see him at practice, you can tell that he's given his best. And so guys like that are fun to coach, man. And I, I've, I, it's been a joy to just be around. Coach, I know you guys ran some five defensive back, six defensive back stuff last year, obviously when, when down and distance would, would, you know, dictate it, but going, I guess, mainly to, not mainly, but more of a, a four two five look. Is there something about that that you, you feel fits uh, the personnel that you're working with a linebacker linebacker a little bit better and what they can do? Well, you know, Alan, it's it's the coach fullest vision, and with the personnel that we have, we feel it suits us the best. And so it, it's been really fun to watch these guys fly around because more than anything, the players that we have, man, they're students of the game. So whatever we give them, whatever we try to teach, whatever we try to implement, they they absorb it. And it's just a try to apply it in the best way that they can. So it's been fun to watch. I'm curious to get your thoughts on, on Stephen Dix Jr. And I guess the, the areas of growth from him from, say, you know, fall camp last year to, to now, I guess, where has he made the biggest strides? Well, you know, with Stephen, you know, he's one of those, those young men that I was saying that played in games last year, you know, a significant amount. And so he's, even though he may be young from an age standpoint, from a playing standpoint, he has grown tremendously. What, one thing that I've noticed about him this spring is that you can tell that the game is slowing down a little bit more. When you're in high school and you're the best player on your team, you're usually moving faster and uh, more physical and just more explosive than everybody else on the field. When you get to Florida State, you're just you're one of everybody else that's on the team who's equally that, that the athlete that you are, or if not better. And so what, what he learned, especially as an early enrollee, that he has some room to grow. And the thing that I've, that I've been really impressed and pleased with from last year to now is that he's put in the work. One thing that, that's impressive about him, he, he works extremely hard. He's a student of the game. He's passionate about doing the little things right. And if you ask any one of his teammates or any of the coaches, he has the respect of absolutely everybody because of how he goes about his business. So he's fun to coach. Sorry, Corey. Yeah, Chris, could you talk, I mean, can you even put into words what it means to have a full spring? What You've been around this sport your whole life, and to not have one last year, and to now get a full spring under your belt with your players, how much more do you know about them? Do you learn about your team? Do you learn about the their competitive spirit? All of that through the course of this month. You know, I think when it comes to any sport, particularly football, you get a gauge of who your players are in off-season workouts who they are from a character standpoint, their work ethic, how they respond to adversity. But one thing that's unique about this game, particularly in my position, is that when you put the pads on, it's a completely different ball game. You know, guys who are football players really show up and guys who aren't, they have room to grow. And so having a spring this year has been phenomenal, you know, especially when you juxtapose it to not having one last year, right? And so it's been, it's been fun. I mean, have, having three to four months, um, or I guess last year having an eight-month window 
where you don't get on the football field and you go you don't get on the grass and get the opportunity to teach compared to a two and a half three month period here this year I mean it's, it's no comparing them so, so Kaylin Kaylin Deloach is someone who, who started off like as a starter last season and kind of changed roles a little bit and now he's moved positions like I guess how have you seen him kind of handle I don't know if it's adversity but just kind of handle all that change and and transition like how has he how has he responded to that one thing about Kaylin is that he's he's really he can adjust he can adjust if he knows what's expected of him if he knows what that uh, what he needs to get done and how can, he can apply the expectations in a way that allows him to be successful you know he loves football he loves being around his teammates and he, he's a phenomenal friend and so he's been fun to watch grow and develop one thing about him if he's he's not afraid to ask questions and he's not afraid to fly around and hit people. And so those are attributes that you look for when, when you're a linebacker coach. And so he's been he's been fun to groom and develop, like all of them. He still has room to grow. And he's, he's taken on that challenge, I think, head on. He, he's, he's grown significantly this spring as well. Coach, where would a 21-year-old Chris Marv have played in a, in a two-linebacker set? Which, which guy would you have been? And then also, I guess, when we think, at least some guys, me personally in the media, when we, we hear about a 4-2-5, less linebackers on the field, we think maybe there's less responsibilities. How much has sort of changed? Fundamentals are fundamentals, but in terms of roles, assignments, uh, do things change with a, a kind of a new look? Well, without giving too much away, you know, I think that our system or any defensive system for, for that matter, you know, it requires and demands a lot from linebackers. You know, the communication element, the seeing the big picture, uh, processing information pre-snap, and being able to communicate to the front and to the back end, I mean, that hasn't changed at all. And that's the expectation, and that will continue to be the expectation moving forward. Um, when you ask about me, where would I play? I hope I played anywhere on this field. Whatever I could have done to help the team. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys.